I want to remind the Chamber that there are many African Americans in America sitting at home in fear. <coughs> they are concerned about a president that has had the support of the Ku Klux Klan. They are concerned about a president that has welcomed anti, uh, sorry, white supremacists. It's a term that we, we almost hope would sort of fall into the into history, into his close inner circle. Listen carefully and you'll hear the thousands of people outside right now in this house, outside this house saying they do not want Donald Trump to be coming into this country on a royal state visit. We have a duty to listen to these people, to give them a voice. We have a duty to listen to these people, to give them a voice. And if people from the Trump administration are listening, this is not fake news. Only two presidents of the United States have been granted a state visit since 1952. It's extraordinary that that's the situation. But here we have a position where seven days into his presidency, he's invited to have the full panoply of a state visit. Extraordinary, completely unprecedented. The fact is that there were 61 million people who voted for Donald Trump. And when we stand up in this country and then condemn him for being racist, and I've seen no evidence of that, uh, I have seen no evidence of him uh, being racist or that they attack him in, in an unseemly way, we're actually attacking the American people. It is to my mind foolish to allow our personal views and assessments of an individual yeah. and some of their more grotesque characteristics or mm. behaviour to blur what is in Britain's national yeah, interest. Yeah. Well said, Simon. And what I believe is Britain's national interest is to continue that special relationship. This is a special moment for the special relationship. Mr. Turner, the visit should happen, the visit will happen, and when it does, I trust that the United Kingdom will extend a polite and generous welcome to President Donald Trump. <laughs>